about the day. I uh, hope all are staying healthy as we continue through the pandemic. And uh, I have gotten a new microphone. My son got me a new microphone that hopefully will do a much better job than the other one was doing. Anyway, I know here in Montreal, we've gone into a very strict uh, second lockdown. Uh, it's going to last, uh, it will last for more than a month. We're about three weeks into it. We even have a curfew, eight o'clock at night. You need to be home and you're not out until six in the morning. Obviously, unless, of course, you work third shift. And, but, you know, nobody out socializing or anything like that. So it uh, continues to be stretching. but. Uh, Hey, we get through it, and uh, Nancy and I are healthy, children are healthy, and our daughter-in-law is healthy, so we're encouraged about that. Uh, today, I want to uh, summarize a teaching that I gave a week or two ago that is uh, extremely, extremely fundamental uh, in, the, in the sense of foundational teaching. That's what is probably a better word. And it, it's only three verses. It comes at the end uh, of what is uh, called the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, Jesus gave a message to thousands of people, and at the very end, he comes to a conclusion. And so needless to say, that conclusion of all that he has said is extremely, extremely relevant and needs to be listened to. And the three verses are what is uh, commonly called a parable. It's found in Matthew 7, verses 24 to 27. And a parable is a story, a, a story that has kind of two levels of meaning. One level is, is the way you hear it, but more fundamentally is a spiritual or a deeper meaning level. And so Jesus chooses this story to wrap up the Sermon on the Mount. You'll have to read the Sermon on the Mount for yourself. It starts at, the, at Matthew 5 with the first verse and goes to the end of Matthew 7. So in, in the Gospel of Matthew, it's three chapters, three full chapters. And some amazing, amazing teaching is found in there and a teaching that many of us have heard before, uh, such as, you know, don't look at the speck in your brother or sister's eye. But, but pay attention to the log in your own eye uh, it, it, before you start judging people. Things like this. Many, many things we've grown up with, many things we've heard. So this end, this wrap up, this conclusion, which is any teacher, any preacher, any politician, any public speaker is going to tell you, it's important to wrap up in a significant way. It's the last thing people hear and may very well be what they retain. So Christ takes his teaching, the Sermon on the Mount, and he summarizes it this way. He says, there are people, there are two types of people, essentially. He says, in fact, rep one represented by one man who builds a house, and this is a wise man. And he builds a house, and he makes sure the foundation of that house is built on the rock or on bedrock. And he said, this man's house is assailed with storms, with rain, uh, rain, with floods, with wind, okay, all sorts of trials. But the house stands fast. The house is not destroyed. The house holds together. He says, a second man is very, very unwise. This man builds his house on a foundation of sand. And the same Life storms come into the life of this unwise man. That house is smashed by floods and, and rain and storms, etc. Exactly the same circumstances in life. And what happens? That house crumbles. It falls apart. And in fact, in the Greek, it's very significant. It says it the house falls apart. And then it says again, and its destruction was complete or full destruction. And in fact, the word in Greek for the full or complete is the word mega. 
which we have brought right into, you know, our modern day uh, language. Oh, it was a mega concert. It was a, you know, a mega flood. It was a mega, anything huge is mega, right? So Jesus said the house crumpled and it was a mega destruction, a mega ruin, <laughs> totally came apart. Now, I've, I've actually used uh, this passage in several weddings in, in an attempt to encourage couples, young couples generally, but, but I've also married some older couples, maybe a second, a second marriage or whatever. And, and I say, look, you have a choice on how to found your home. Because there's no question that Jesus is saying to these people, I'm not really primarily interested in these two houses built by the wise man, built by the unwise man. Because the houses represent life. A house represents our individual life. It can represent our couple. It can represent uh, our society even. So I have used this to say to couples, look, you can be wise and be unwise. The choice is obviously yours. But Jesus tells us we should build on a solid foundation. Now, Jesus, in this parable, in this story, gives us the foundation. He says very simply, the person who hears my words, and, and the verb there, here again in the Greek, it's a present active. What that means is the person who hears and hears again, or who habitually hears, or who makes a habit of hearing my words, and, and is actively engaged, okay? They're not passive. They're not sitting back and just, oh, I'm kind of hearing it. It's kind of background words, background music. You know, you go to a restaurant, that background music. You're not, it's not to be your focus while you're there, right? Well, that's what Jesus is saying. Don't let my words be background. They have to be up front, and you need to be actively listening. Now, it's very interesting in the parable that both the wise and unwise person listen. It's the same verb in the Greek. They're both actively listening, hearing, I mean, they're hearing, and, and they're paying attention. They're, but the great difference comes, what do they do with the words that they have the habit of listening to? All sorts of people were in this crowd listening to Jesus at the Sermon on the Mount. They were all listening and actively there. They'd chosen to be there. But the key as to whether the house, whether that be the marriage couple, whether that be your individual life, my individual life, the key, whether the house stands or falls, is depends on the person practicing the words he hears, putting into practice, obeying the words he hears, applying the words he hears. All other aspects of this parable, and it's so short, are the same. Two people, two houses, both are hearing. But what is listening and applying and putting into practice? The other is just hearing and not acting on it. So the one putting into practice is putting their foundation, the foundation of their life on the rock, on the bedrock, and it's solid. So that when the storms come, and they will come, and I tell young couples that, don't kid yourselves, storms will come. They come to every couple. We've had ours. Nancy and I had ours. Uh, we, 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 we lost uh, uh a baby to to a car accident six six months after we were married we uh, we she had a mis miscarriage together I've had depression I was hospitalized let me tell you in thirty nine years of our marriage we've seen about everything and yet we've built we've chosen to build our foundation on the words of Jesus Christ 
And of course, his words primarily are not suggestions or, you know, it might be a good idea if his words speak to our hearts. And the first thing he does is he commends himself to us. He doesn't just say, hear my words. He says, follow me. Ours is not a, a religion of rules. Christianity is, is a relationship. And out of that relationship, we grow, we develop, we, we strengthen the bedrock of our lives. So Christ's teachings, yes, but the person of Christ is always the focus. We're not looking to him as some good teacher or, or some guru. He's life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And so he's telling us in this uh, last parable at the end of this incredible sermon on how to live. Now, you have to go out and put into practice these things I'm teaching you. And people learn very quickly to live like a Christian, to, to, to begin to live and to continue to live and to grow in that ability to live like Jesus Christ. We have to have him in our lives. His spirit has to be in us and moving us and empowering us. It doesn't erase our individual personality. No, it makes us more alive and more unique than we've ever been before. In fact, we reach the potential of who we are when we have the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of Christ in our lives, and then we live out his teachings, such as love God above all else and love your neighbor as yourself, or do unto others as you would have them do unto you. These, these words are from Christ. They're not from Krishna. They're not from Confucius. They're not from Allah. The, these, Christ gives us teaching that no one else ever has. But most importantly, he was very clear about, come to me, he said. Confucius didn't say that, and Allah didn't say that. They never, they're always talking about God. But Jesus was very clear. Yes, I'm pointing you to the Father. God, the Father, I'll connect you there. But you know what? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. <laughs> What a bedrock. It's phenomenal. But we don't get there overnight, right? We learn, we hear, we apply, we stumble, we fall, we get up, we reapply. It takes a lifetime to become more and more made into the image of Jesus Christ. So let's be patient with ourselves and each other. But let's stay with it. Let's stay with the program. Let's stay with walking with him, following him. Day to day, yep, day to day, in the basic situation of life.